my goodness, we have got to keep talking about this Mika Miller case. It keeps unfolding every day. Before we even jump in, Duncan's had come up with a new summer menu, so I just grabbed a couple items this morning I want to very quickly try. I had Cool Whip, it all melted before I got home. <laughs> but this is their signature donut latte. It's just with whole milk. Okay, it's pretty good. What I'm curious about, I got the watermelon burst donut too. So this is what it looks like. It's covered in, I don't know, watermelon flavoring. Let's try it. Okay. It's good. Let me, I don't think I got any of the jelly. I still didn't. Mmm, my goodness. Mmm. Oh. Hmm. It's actually not bad, but it's like a sweet. I would not have that in the morning with my coffee. I took notes. Okay, I went through three different podcasts yesterday. I found a girl's Facebook profile. Her name is Kyler Marlowe, I believe. I'll put up a quick screenshot of her Facebook page. She has been covering this case as well. I'm more so, I'm not trying to crack the case, okay? I'm simply taking the details that have been made public and I am talking about them. I'm talking about what makes sense, what seems a little suspicious, just what my opinion is about the case. Hopefully I'll have some new information for you if you are interested in the case as well, you have not heard yet. There are real people out there deep diving into this case. So if you wanna go check out her Facebook, I definitely recommend it, although, we are going to be, my next video about this case, we're going to be diving right into her Facebook and going over some of her posts. Hi, if you're new to my channel, my name is Shane and welcome back if you are returning. We are covering the South Carolina Mika Miller and Pastor J.P. Miller case. Very quick summary, Pastor's wife Mika Miller has been found deceased with a pew pew wound. Actually has come to find out that it wasn't in the back of the head like people uh, speculated. I should all say, by the way, this is all alleged. I did not see her autopsy. I was not there to confirm where the wound was. I believe she was also found in a park as well. Uh, she was on her work. Uh, she was on her way to work one Saturday, and that's where her body was discovered uh, at a park that she actually didn't frequent. Like, nobody ever really went there, so it's kind of odd where her body was found. Every piece of this case so far seems extremely suspicious, and I'm just here to almost give you bite-sized pieces of the case that we can digest, think about, talk about, have a discussion below, and then come back with even more information. Now, we already knew from our last video, Mika filed a protective order. Now, I thought the protective order and the divorce was filed at the same time. Come to find out that Mika had actually initially filed for divorce in October of 2023. The case was dismissed in February of 2024. I don't know why. I don't know if she was sort of convinced to go back because it can be very hard when you're in those types of situations, If especially if one of the people are very, very manipulative. They can really pull at heartstrings. They can really make you question, well, am I even doing the right thing? Along with, I think, just being the pastor's wife and almost having the entire church's eyes upon you and that pressure of trying to make a marriage work because you are a pastor and you're supposed to be these religious leaders. So case was dismissed the following year in February. Okay, now during this time, I guess people were trying to almost convince each other that Mika was crazy. I don't have all the facts straight. This was coming from, there was a podcast on May 6th. This girl named Krista, I don't I believe she was just a member of this South Carolina church and her husband also attended. But she ended up she ended up coming on to a podcast on to I believe the podcast was Mama True Crime or so I don't watch too many podcasts. I apologize, but she she rambled off a whole lot of information in that podcast and I'm like, whoa, 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 wait. She was spilling some background information about who J.P. Miller was and some of the stuff that he did. Um, and I guess there's also a big 
a conspiracy with JP's father as well, but that's going to be a separate video. So we'll dive into Kyler's Facebook for one video and then we're going to talk about JP's father's history too because I think there is some weird things there going on. One quick thing which I think is just going to blow things out of the water. Huge update. Mika Miller had released an affidavit. So I pulled up the affidavit. So it's quite a lengthy affidavit with 17 points. So we're not going to go through everything, but I'm going to highlight what I think is fascinating or important to this case. So I pulled up this affidavit. So it's the state of South Carolina in the matter of a state of Mika A. Miller. Now because Mika had filed for her divorce before her death, it's still valid. Okay. Okay. Yes. So this is coming from, I just want to make sure this is coming from Sierra Francis, which is Mika's sister. I am the petitioner in the proceedings, which are pending before the probate court as to the appointment of a special administrators for my sister's estate. Number two, I am Mika's younger sister, having been raised by our parents, Michael Francis and Angelita, Angelita Salas with our siblings. Wait, wait. We're, again, I'm going to paraphrase, so we're not here forever. Number four is where she stated states, I was aware of Mika's family dynamics and relationship with her husband, John Paul Miller, and stepchildren. Well, they had quite a bit of stepchildren together. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. It looks like there's five stepchildren involved. So it looks like her and her sister kept pretty well in touch, if not talking every day, every few days. Mika would visit her uh, sister in South Carolina, in, in Gaffney, South Carolina, at least once a month. She goes on to say, I know my sister to have expressed the abuse and violence by her husband to others, including family members and members of the church congregation. Mika told me that there were people following her, keeping track of where she went. She thought that Mr. Miller hired people to follow her. Mr. Miller later confirmed this during a sermon I watched. Mika confided in me that Mr. Miller was moving assets that were in his name, such as his vehicle, changing the deed to his house and the, to the church. Yeah, in the podcast, I did hear that J.P. Miller was selling estates, selling property. This is very strange. In February 2024, so this was allegedly when the um, divorce was dismissed, Mr. Miller removed my sister's personal items from the home they shared while she was admitted to Wakama, Wakama? Mental Health Facility and left them in the apartment of a colleague named Diana. My sister was not aware that her personal possessions had been removed from her residence until she was released from the hospital. Very quick interjection. So some of my notes about this podcast that I was watching, I'm going to do a separate video of those notes because there is a lot of notes. Today I want to focus on the affidavit that was released. But there was concern of control for a lot of the men in the church it seemed. There were several women who have come out who have spoken about the obedience expected of wives in this church. And there was one point that the pastor was trying to make it out that Mika was crazy, that she was schizophrenic, literally, allegedly, told the church not to answer Mika's phone calls. So even if Mika was in a DV situation, which it very much seems so, even if she reached out for help, well, JP and his pastor and any other pastors involved or members of the church have already reached out and said, no, you can't, you don't listen to her, she's crazy. So they kind of got one step ahead. But Mika is smarter than JP thinks, and she also put something that we're going to get into. So going into a little bit of the evidence that Mika herself was gathering because she knew that this was a bad relationship. Whether or not this guy ends up being guilty, it was a bad relationship. It seemed very controlling. Uh, Mika did not seem happy. She seemed like she felt stuck. Now they're trying to make her out like she's crazy. So even if she went and filed for a divorce, people probably would take the pastor's side, you know? So she was in a really 
tough situation. Sierra goes on to say, Mika was gathering and storing the evidence she had to bring to the attorney, to an attorney, for filing for divorce to support her claims against Mr. Miller and to, as to his abuse, characters, uh, his paramours and associates, he paid off or blackmailed when this pastor allegedly was telling people not to contact or don't respond to Mika, don't answer her phone calls. He was paying big bucks to these people to do so and to also almost support his story of Mika being crazy. They would lie for him. They, he had so many people who would lie for him. While at the facility, the documents, emails, filed, etc. was removed from her phone, personal laptop, vehicle, and purse and were never recovered. So all of the all of the evidence, anything she had in her phone, wiped, emails, wiped, um, while she was locked away in a mental health institute. I've never personally been in one, but I've heard story times. I don't believe you're supposed to have your phone. Um, maybe for different, maybe every case is different. I don't know. I can't speak on it. I'm ignorant to that fact. But I can imagine that she wouldn't have any contact. So while this poor woman is in a mental health facility that she probably doesn't even have to be in because they're trying to convince everybody that she's crazy, they're now take, going through her stuff, removing all the evidence. What I want to know though, like, if the, but if the, sister knew all of this was going on like obviously the sister then knew that Mika wasn't being crazy wasn't crazy she was being manipulated so I don't I obviously don't know I can't make my judgment from uh, facts that I, I'm unaware of but I'm just curious about where Mika's family was during the prime of this relationship because afterwards if you get a chance they have clips of uh, the protests that they're throwing at this church um, in against domestic violence. Uh, for Mika's memorial, I mean, her parents and her family had a separate service outside of the church. So think of this. Her husband is having a memorial service for his wife at the church, and his family doesn't even want to go to that. They're doing their own thing, and not only that, if I can find a picture of it, her service, like in loving memory of, doesn't even have his last name. It's just, it's just Mika Acacia. So I think the family, I think the family knows that something's going on. That doesn't make any sense. Sierra goes on to say Mika talked about uh, what she wanted her life to be like following her divorce from Mr. Miller. So obviously she had plans of moving on. She was not happy. She knew she had to get out of the situation. It was just a matter of how at this point. And that's pretty scary because she probably knew that he had all these people who were willing to literally do anything for him, including lying. Having traveled for church mission this fall from October 15th to October 27th, 2023, so that was the same time that she filed for divorce initially, Mika was intending to participate in additional missions even to live part-time in Kenya. Mika recently shipped some of her personal items to Kenya. Okay. Point 13, my sister expressed to me that she was fearful she would not make it to the, to the divorce and that her life would be taken from her. It is my belief based on conversations with my sister that she told multiple people, including other family members. So Mika was confiding in her family. And what, again, I... I if I if I went to if I went to somebody who loved me and I said, "Hey, this person is probably gonna kill me." I mean, I don't believe that they would stay quiet. Um, again, I don't know if they're wiping all the evidence though. Then Mika, it's it's hearsay. It's he said he said she said. So at this point, Mika was smart in trying to gather that evidence, but she was surrounded by evil people obviously who took all her evidence so at what point can you go to the cop and say hey i'm fearful for my life with having merit you need evidence trust me i know <laughs> number 14 i think is the most telling point of this entire affidavit i feel like it is mika speaking from beyond the grave because i kid you not mika stated to me on many occasions Okay, not once, not twice, many occasions, which again, if my brothers came to me and said, hey, my, you know, <laughs> wife might kill me, uh, I'm probably not going to stay quiet about it. However, it says, if I end up with a bullet in my head, 
It was not by me, it was by JP. I shit you not. I'm sorry, but this woman is speaking beyond the grave. <laughs> we, uh, I don't know if it's been fully confirmed, but I believe that the wound was not in the back of her head, like initially um, suspected, but it still was a uh, pew pew wound. So that is crazy that she even called that. She knew. She knew. Did he have, uh, did he have firearms in the house? Was she, I don't know, I don't know how scared she was of this guy. So that affidavit was crazy. We went over that. There was another point where I guess she had gone on a missions trip to Africa. No more than 48 hours after returning home was she found dead. So that kind of, my question in my last video of maybe she came home from the mental health facility where I thought she was, turns out she was in Africa. Who knows what's true at this point because this guy's clearly a liar. But she was in Africa on a missions trip, comes back. I don't think that's enough time to maybe find out that he was having an affair. Still don't know if he was having an affair with that Susie woman or if it started now or started. I don't know when it started. I'm still wondering what happened with that timeline when Mika returned home from Africa up to the 48 hours where her body was found. That's a question that we can have a discussion down below. Our next video about this, I'm going to get into some of the bullet points from the podcast that I saw. There was some more in interesting information uh, just basically about JP's character and a little bit more of the uh, bribing and blackmail he did on his wife. If you guys enjoyed the video, please go ahead, leave a thumbs up. Also, while you're down there, hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss any new videos. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. It's crazy.